Chairman Blumenthal and Ranking Member Johnson for holding the hearing and for leading this inquiry into the efforts of the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince to influence U.S. policy and uh, the impacts that it has on our national security. Um, I want to just note for the record uh, that, as uh, Mr. Sternfels well knows, uh, that I join Senator Hawley in my concern about McKinsey's role in the opioid epidemic. Uh, we have passed some legislation that needs to be fully implemented to require more transparency in similar situations. Uh, but let's turn to the issue at hand today. Congress has a really well-established right to compel documents and testimony, including from United States companies. And I just want to be clear for the public here. The Supreme Court of the United States has held that our Constitution prohibits United States judicial interference with the issuance of congressional subpoenas. So a court in this country can't interfere with congressional subpoenas. So I would just, yes or no down the line, I just want to make sure we have this on the record. Is it true that your companies refuse to comply with this committee's subpoena, citing an injunction from a Saudi Arabian administrative court, a court that is notoriously not independent and under the direct influence of the Saudi regime? So please, yes or no, we'll start with you, Mr. Lesser. Senator, we've complied to the extent that we can given the situation that we're placed in. So that is a yes, you are taking the Saudi Arabian's court's direction over this congressional direction, Mr. Sternfels. Senator, we're, we believe we're in the process of complying with the subpoena in this subcommittee and we'll continue to do so. But you are still uh, letting the Saudi Arabian court uh, govern how you are complying, if you are complying. Mr. Klein. Senator, thank you for the question. We are complying. We intend to comply fully, uh, and we intend to continue to press uh, all avenues to ensure our full compliance. So that means, I just want to be clear here, if you aren't successful with the Saudi Arabian courts, you're going to fully comply and just um, decide that uh, the United States Congress has authority over a United States company and that you're going to follow our law. If the Saudi Arabian court doesn't go your way, you're going to still follow the law here and fully comply. We are entirely hopeful that we will resolve all aspects of the legal issues in Saudi Arabia, and we have intended to comply with this U.S. subpoena from the beginning, and we intend to comply going forward. I will take that as a you will uh, continue to allow the Saudi Arabian Administrative Court to uh, govern your response. And Mr. Kiri. Senator, we will fully comply with the subcommittee subpoena. And we'll take the, we're accelerating that process uh, every day, but we will fully comply with the subcommittee subpoena. Regardless of what the Saudi Arabian courts we will, decide. We will, fully, we will fully comply, Senator. Okay, just let me be clear for those who didn't give the last answer. By refusing to respond to this committee's subpoena and request for a legal justification for your refusal, your firms appear to have placed your loyalties to Saudi Arabia above your loyalty to the United States of America, our national security, and the principles of transparency. Uh, I also heard your discussion about the risk assessments you do before you decide to take on a particular client. And one of the things a good legal department does in a massive company with lots of resources is that they look at the law of the jurisdiction that you want to do business in, and if it says uh, that they might give you trouble with complying with the United States subpoena from this Congress, you might decide not to do business there because that's a high risk. And the fact that you decided anyway seems to me to say that you don't take the authority of this Congress very seriously. So now to Mr. Sternfels and Mr. Lesser. Both McKinsey and Boston Consulting Group do work in China, which, like Saudi Arabia, does not have an independent judiciary. I am concerned that if Congress were to subpoena information from McKinsey or BCG or its work in China or on behalf of the Chinese government, that a Chinese court could also try to block compliance with that subpoena. So to the two of you, if a Chinese court blocked compliance with a congressional subpoena, would you refuse to respond to the subpoena? Mr. Lesser, yes or no? 
Senator, we're doing everything we can to reply to the subpoena as fully as we can and specific to China. We have very clear guidelines in of the kind of work we do and don't do. So Just if a Chinese court careful. tried to block your compliance with the subpoena, you would ignore the Chinese court or do your best to get them to change their mind, but ultimately you would comply with the subpoena from this Congress regardless of what the position of the Chinese government is. Senator, we do our best to comply in every situation and follow the laws of all the countries in which we work. That is, that is what we have tried to do here, and we, we are incredibly respectful of this subcommittee and its subpoena, and we are continuing to work to be able to fully meet your request. So let me ask Mr. Sternfels again. The Chinese government tells you you may not comply with the subpoena from the United States Congress. What are you going to do? Thank you, Senator. And I'd um, start uh, with the, um, reaffirming we don't work uh, with the federal government in, uh, in China. We have very tight client selection policies. All right. I, I'm um, going to stop if, you just because my time is limited. Um, the Chinese government runs th the businesses in China. So let's just be very clear about the, the line you're trying to draw just isn't there. So now... Uh, again, my time is limited, and I have one more question for you, Mr. Sternfeld. So um, will you cooperate with an investigation with a subpoena from Congress, even if the Chinese government says no? Absolutely, Senator. Cooperating with this, um, with this Senate is uh, our highest priority, and we will continue to do so. Well, if that is true, then you need to respond fully to this committee's subpoena. Um, because right now what we see is a refusal to cooperate with this investigation, and that sets a really dangerous precedent, um, which again leads me, my colleagues, and the American public to question uh, the loyalties of your company. Now, I have one more quick question, if I could, uh, and it really is just a follow-on to Senator Hawley. Um, I've led oversight and legislative efforts to bring greater transparency to conflicts of interest from groups like McKinsey in the wake of your failure to disclose your work for opioid producers while simultaneously advising the Food and Drug Administration on opioid regulations. Once again, here, McKinsey is failing to tr be transparent in its work, and in this case, it has significant implications for our national security. You talked with Senator Hawley about uh, your receipts from government contracts. Um, I know that in fiscal year 2023, uh, you had tens of millions of dollars uh, of um, proceeds from our defense industry and from national security agencies such as the U.S. Department of Defense. So I have to tell you that I am deeply skeptical that McKinsey's work is compatible with United States national security interests, especially given that your work has been linked to alleged human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia and supporting a Chinese state-owned enterprise that constructs military installments in the South China Sea. Uh, at the end of the day, what the American people want to know is whether American companies will put American national interests before anyone else's. And the reason you are all here today is because your response to these subpoenas seems to really call that into question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, uh, Senator Hassan. Just to follow up on a couple of the questions that Senator Hassan asked. 